Hello and welcome to Guns and Gear. You know, I've been meaning to make this video for a while, but I, I'm, I'm really glad that I, I waited because it gave me more of a chance to uh, use these holsters and, uh, you know, come up with a, a better, more informed opinion about them that I can relate to you folks on YouTube. Now, the holsters are from Armed Civilian uh, 556, and he is a YouTuber. He has a YouTube channel. He makes videos. And uh, he also makes holsters. And he contacted me quite a few months back, actually. And uh, probably about five months, I think. Um, but at any rate, uh, he contacted me and asked me uh, if he could send me a couple of his holsters that he wanted to hear what I had to say about them. And uh, I told him I would, you know, and, I, and heck, I'd even make a video about them. But just understand that, you know, uh, I'm going to say what's really on my mind and how and what I really think about him and, and he welcomed that. Uh, really nice guy. Uh, we talked on the phone one day, I knew for uh, quite a while, we talked about everything from uh, educating the kids to uh, Second Amendment rights and all kinds of stuff. Outstanding individual. When I received the package, uh, he sent me three holsters. And when I opened up that package, you know, I got to tell you that, you know, I was caught off guard. They are really high quality stuff. You know, uh, I know that a lot of people make uh, Kydex or plastic or whatever material that they use types of holsters. And uh, there's some guys out there that, that uh, have relatively small operations that do really good work. There's quite a few. And Armed Civilian 556 is one of those fellows. Uh, the, the fit and finish of the holsters are just outstanding. Now, like I said, he sent me three. Go ahead and show you the other two because I'm wearing one right now. I know the lighting's poor, but I'm going to move these over to the kitchen table there where I can get better lighting and more of a close-up. But this one here is a uh, more of a camouflage uh, um, digital type pattern, woodland. And this one here is a carbon fiber. Okay, And uh, they're very good looking holsters, I think. But... Well, I took them out of the package and looked at them. I mean, the, the way the ends are, are finished off and just the overall design and the work put into it is excellent stuff. Now I have one on my hip, and this one's in a desert camo pattern, right? And so, uh, and it's also for a full-size Glock, so I have my Glock 22 in here. And because it's, it's also brown, I thought it would look good with that. But I wanted y'all to see how it fits on the, on the belt. All right. Now, obviously, these are outside the waistband holsters, and if any of you folks have uh, experience with like a uh, pancake type of holster or something of that nature, you know that they uh, those types of holsters kind of ride high. Now, these are what I would consider mid to high uh, height. Uh, they're not low. I, I'm more or less used to inside the waistband types of holsters and they usually carry a lot lower towards the towards the belt and these kind of fit up high but it, the way that he's designed the belt loops and stuff it really pulls the holster in and as you can see even with you know extra girth and some uh, and some love handles on the side here it doesn't push the holster out very much because you know good belt good holster good design holster will still keep that up next to your body. And uh, I really like that. I really like the way that, uh, you know, these holsters stay up close to the body. And from, uh, from the carrying position, you obviously can get a very good uh, combat grip or a shooting grip, whatever you want to call it, on the handgun from the holster. And I've had a chance to work with these uh, holsters a little bit and I like them, right? It took me a little while to get used to carrying something a little bit higher again, but uh, I tell you what, now it's winter time and I'm wearing coats and jackets and things of that nature. Uh, I have no problem uh, wearing one of these holsters, you know, on the outside of my belt because I'm gonna have a jacket on anyway and going about my day. Because of the way that the holster is sucked up to your body, uh, it's a it's an outstanding concealment holster as far as that goes. And then when you go camping or something like that, and you're maybe going to engage in a little open carry, oh, there you go. You're you're good to go. You got a, a a very good quality holster. 
Now let's take a look at them at the table. Okay, so we're over here at the table and uh, hopefully some better lighting so you can see these holsters. Uh, there really are some good looking holsters. I'll show them to you real quick. Here's the carbon fiber one. And you know, I've never had a carbon fiber holster. Uh, and I gotta tell you, that's rather striking. I like the way that looks. Uh, I'm kind of glad that he uh, sent that to me. Or sent that stock because he asked me what I was looking for, colors or whatever, and I said I really didn't care. As far as the color goes, here is the digital camel one that I, I did have on my belt when I made the first part of the video. Okay. And here is that woodland camo, which I think looks great too. All three of these uh, are just out, just very well done. It's just very well done, very well put together. A lot of quality in this. Uh, I appreciate his attention to detail that he puts in making his holsters. So let's talk about the holsters uh, really quickly. Let's go through some specs. Uh, these two holsters are actually the same model, but they're for different guns. Okay, and they are the CX4. 0.5 okay and as you can see this one is for a 1911 commander four inch barrel and this one here is the same model number and that's been rubbed off because I have worn this uh, quite a bit and this is made for that uh, Glock 17 22 31 and everything uh, smaller size or frame size of uh, Glocks okay I wore this one quite a bit because I, I often wear my Glock 23, or since it's been cold, I've been wearing, I've been carrying the uh, Glock 22, which is the full size gun. I have uh, the uh, availability to wear jackets and coats and things of that nature, and you can conceal a bigger firearm. So that's what these are. Now, th both of these uh, holsters are also designed to fit at that four o'clock uh, position, so to speak, which is very familiar to me. I like that location. This holster here, however, is the CXP. This one here is actually uh, designed to be worn right straight on your hip in that three o'clock position. And uh, you know, even though we talked about that some, and I, and I told him that I, I don't prefer that, I guess he wanted to get my uh, my opinion of it anyway, so he sent me one. And as you can see, this one, I'm starting to rub off some of that material. You can see these rub marks on here. Let me try to get that in there from wearing these holsters. I have spent some time wearing these holsters before I decided to turn the camera on. Now I'll be honest with you, I can scoot this back up on my hip enough that it's okay and out of the three holsters I like this one the best and now I'm going to uh, tell you why. Um, for one thing, when we had our conversation, I told him to, uh, that I like a sweatband because it offers some protection to the gun and it protects your uh, 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 magazine disconnect. Well, neither one of these two holsters right here have any type of uh, sweat guard or sweatband or whatever you want to call it. Sweat guard, I guess, would be a better terminology for it. He was saying that a lot of people don't like it because that piece of of plastic sitting maybe this far out uh, digs into people's side. But I do like what they offer and I will put up with the with that and I've never really had too much of a problem with uh, the plastic digging up into my side. Uh, here is a Glock 19 okay and I really think that's that that's what this holster is better suited for the Glock 19 23 uh, size of guns fits in there absolutely wonderful has good retention uh, just an outstanding it, it's outstandingly fit to the gun to this size of gun and as you can see it does protect uh, the front sight the muzzle does not uh, come outside but if you look here you'll see that because it doesn't have that material coming up it doesn't have any protection whatsoever for the uh, magazine release okay now, I just saw a video of somebody with a very similar, I think it had a different finish, um, different plastic, but it was the same model. And uh, it did. You know, it, and it didn't have the sweat guard either, but it did have higher material up there. And that is a, uh, a more favorable thing, because during the time that I wore 
this holster and I did wear it for a good amount of time and I wore uh, the, my 19, well actually it, it was mostly my Glock 23 and my Glock 22, okay? Now, uh, my Glock 23 is just like this 19 in that it has the, uh, the, uh, this type of magazine disconnect button. And twice during the time that I was uh, carrying this holster, my uh, spare tire evidently was put enough pressure against the thing to disengage the magazine. Now the magazine never fell out, right, because there's, these are like an FBI cant and so the uh, holsters are canted a little bit when you're wearing them. But when I got home and, and uh, took the belt, uh, took the holster and gun off, I noticed that the uh, magazine was disconnected and had to reinsert it. Alright, so uh, whether or not you're going to uh, like a gun that ha or a holster that has that uh, sweat guard on it, you still want material that can protect this uh, magazine disconnect. Uh, the other thing about this particular holster is uh, it doesn't quite protect the front sight. It, it allows the front sight to be exposed. Now back a long time ago I had a uh, Yaki slide type of holster and that holster was a leather uh, arrangement and it was really short. I mean there's a lot of the uh, of the slide would stick out of that holster. The reason I liked it, it was so versatile. You could use so many different guns with that with that holster and I carried guns with that holster for you know a good period of time and, and I, what I mean by that is uh, two three years but over that time I also learned some things. The Yaki slide just like these holsters fit on the outside of the belt and that means that there is a lot more exposure to running into things and there's kind of a different angle than being on the inside of your pants that when it's sticking outside of the belt. And uh, I know that one firearm that I had, I was hunting, I was in the mountains, I kind of sat on a rock to take a break and when I got back to camp I noticed that I had busted my front sight off. Okay, And uh, there was another occasion where uh, I just was out doing whatever I was doing on a normal day carrying a firearm and when I got back home and I took my belt and firearm off, uh, my holster and firearm off, I noticed that once again that I had busted off a uh, front sight and I had bent and damaged a, a, a front sight and I said you know what that Yaki slide just say, isn't for me. It's just not for me. There's, there's too much opportunity for things to happen to your front sight. So uh, I quit using that type. So I would uh, suggest that just a little bit, just a little bit more material right here. Uh, and you know, other than that, you know, great design, very comfortable wearing uh, holster, and I love the, how it sucks up tight to your body. I really like that. It really fits up tight. Now this, uh, this is also the same type of holster, the CX 4.5, and it's made to be carried in that 4 o'clock position like I like. But this is for a 4 inch commander, so I'm going to have the same issue, right? It's just a little bit too short and the front sight sticks out, and you can see that right there. The front sight sticks out there. And I know some people it's not going to be a big deal to them, and that's fine. Uh, but my experience is... You know, it's cost me money <laughs> replacing sights on firearms to have the sight exposed when you wear your gun on the outside of your belt. Okay, so, and again, I like to have a little bit of a sweat guard, a little bit of protection for the uh, magazine release. To uh, show you, now this is, this is made for a commander now, but let me show you a little bit more exaggerated when I put a government model gun in there. You can see this is more like that Yaki slide. It actually was probably cut like this, but you had the entire sight exposed and you know bumping into things, uh, maybe sitting down on a rock, something like that when you're camping or whatever. Um, obviously, you can do you can do damage to your sight. Now this last holster is the uh, digital camo, and uh, I mean the uh, desert digital camo. And this is also made for the full-size Glocks, and it holds the full-size Glock. It does not allow the uh, sight to be exposed at all. 
okay you cannot get to that site and it, overall it fits pretty good even though it's made to sit at that three o'clock position you know if you scoot it around a little bit it, it does pretty well now this one has a little bit of a of, the, of that guard that i was talking about that sweat guard and as you can see there's more material over here that in this little lip that comes out protects against that uh, magazine release and to show you with the same gun the glock 19 there you go it, it, it's made to to cover that just a little bit and that little bit right there keeps your body from pressing up against the frame of the gun and uh, uh, disengaging that that magazine release unintentionally okay so overall man I really like this is the holster that I like the best right here out of the three I think they're all great designs uh, but you know what uh, we rarely get an opportunity as uh, just regular people to be able to talk to folks that design the stuff and maybe make some suggestions and uh, I think it's great that he sent me these holsters and was interested in my my opinion now I'll show you this holster as well and get this to show up close there's a lot of bumps and scratches and, and wear marks on this holster because I had these holsters for about for I think over five months and I wore them. Uh, I exclu exclusively were using these holsters at every given opportunity. Now there were some opportunities that I couldn't, but uh, most of the time I was wearing one of these these three holsters. So I got a lot of time carrying firearms with them and taking them to the range and doing a little bit of drills and practice and things of that nature. And you know, you can really they're really designed that you can get that that uh, full firing grip right from the holster right where it's on your belt to draw uh, outstanding and you'll probably see the uh, this holster in a video not too long from now I hope if I can ever get that swamp to dry out that I like to shoot at uh, going out and, and uh, running some drills so here are the holsters from uh, Arm Civilian uh, 556 they are top quality uh, you may not have the same kind of concerns that I have I do recommend them I do recommend these. I know I may have said some things that weren't uh, real flowery about the uh, about the holsters, but those are my honest opinions from my experience. Okay, so uh, you add a little piece of uh, material on the end here and cover up that area that, that comes across the uh, site there, and this these two holsters would be my favorites right here, no doubt about it. All right, folks. Uh, thank you for the video. I know it's kind of long, and, but I wanted to be sort of thorough and explain uh, some of my opinions and why I feel the way that I feel about uh, certain things. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching my videos. I certainly appreciate it. And remember to shoot straight on the range and in life. Thanks.